as we continue on with notes about about the animal kingdom, we're going to talk this time about two different groups of animals. These are the mollusks and the arthropods. Now they have some things in common and some things that are very, very different. One of the things they have in common is that they both have a special kind of larva called a trochophore larva. And you'll see this only in these two particular groups. Um, it looks like this. It has cilia and a gut and a brain or a mass of nerve cells there. And it's just a developmental form in those two groups. Remember as you're going along you need to take notes in your packet and there's stuff that you need to fill in in the packet and some of it is already filled in for you. So mollusca means soft body and these are uh, soft bodied animals that most of them have a shell. Their body has three regions even though sometimes it doesn't look like it and they have this specialized trochophore larva. They are bilaterally symmetrical, they are protostomes, and they are coelomates. For circulatory system, the most mollusks have an open circulatory system, which means that they have uh, a heart or structure that pumps the blood and the blood passes through a series of sinuses or cavities within the organism, but it's not contained in um, blood vessels and the blood doesn't come in contact with, bo with body cells. The cephalopods, the squid and octopi and related animals, do have a closed system like yours, meaning that the blood stays inside vessels throughout the circulation of the blood. For excretory system, they have nephridia, which is similar to what we saw in the earthworms. These are specialized groups of cells that filter nitrogen waste from their blood. They are dioecious, meaning they have two separate sexes, and they mostly have external fertilization, meaning that the sperm and eggs are released outside the body and come in contact outside the body. But the cephalopods do have internal fertilization, which means that the male deposits the sperm inside the body of the female. Now, all <clears throat> mollusks have three body regions. The foot, which is involved in movement. The mantle, which covers the body and secretes the shell. And the visceral mass, which is the organized mass of the guts, basically, of the animal. Many of the uh, mollusks have one or more shells that they use for protection. So here we have the three major uh, body regions. We have the shell that's secreted by the mantle. It covers the whole body. We have the foot, which is used for movement. And then we have the visceral mass, which is the pile of guts in the middle. This one sort of looks like a snail, but not exactly. <clears throat> a lot of them, uh, a lot of the terrestrial uh, mollusks, like snails, have a radula which is a feeding structure. It's kind of a rasping tongue, kind of like a file that they can uh, use to break down plant material that they eat. Three different classes of mollusca. The gastropods, that means stomach foot, they have one or no shells. Um, they have a, a foot called a stomach foot. That's what gastropod means, okay? They have gills or simple lungs, depending on whether they live in the water or on land. Some of them have a radula to break down uh, plant material or other foods that they eat. And examples of gastropods are snails and slugs. The slugs, of course, are the ones that don't have snail, uh, shells. The bivalves have two shells and gills, and they are filter feeders. And these are the clams, the oysters, and scallops, and animals like that. And then the cephalopods have a head foot. That's what cephalopod means, head foot. The head foot has tentacles and arms. So that, in other words, the foot is broken up into tentacles and arms. Cephalopods have well-developed eyes. They can see almost as well as we can and a closed circulatory system in addition to internal fertilization. And examples of cephalopods are the squid and the octopus. Here's a picture of a gastropod, just a simple snail, okay, that the shell is secreted by the mantle and it's located on, on the top of the animal and it can, they can actually retreat into the shell there. Uh, the bivalves have two shells. This shows uh, the structures inside a clam, as you might see, the gills here filtering food out of the water, or uh, oxygen out of the water, and they filter food out of the water as well. And then the cephalopods, the, the uh, squid and oysters, um, the one cephalopod that has an external shell is called a chambered nautilus. And then the other ones that we saw in that video were the, were the, uh, the cuttlefish. <clears throat> now we move on to phylum arthropoda. Phylum arthropoda is probably the largest group of invertebrate animals and with a lot of diversity. As you can see here, it includes things like pill bugs, insects, lobsters, and spiders. So all different kinds of animals in this one phylum, phylum arthropoda. Uh, 
Arthropoda means jointed feet. And the characteristics that they have are jointed appendages. They have body segmentation with an exoskeleton made of chitin, like we saw in fungi. And the appendages are the structures that extend from the body wall, such as their legs and their antenna. And all of these are jointed um, to move in different ways. There are several different classes in Arthropoda. We'll talk about some of them. A class Crustacea, which have two body regions and mandibles or and two pairs of antennas. This is like the crabs and, um, and lobsters and shrimp, things like that. The next class is class Insecta. These have three major body regions, the head, thorax, and abdomen. They have jaws and antenna and wings. Uh, some of them don't have wings, but, but a lot of them do have wings. Um, they have different kinds of jaws or feeding, feeding uh, parts, mouth parts, uh, different kinds of antenna, all different kinds of variety in class Insecta. Class Chilopoda and Diplopoda are the centipedes and millipedes. The Chilopoda have one pair of appendages for body segment, and the Diplopoda have two pairs of appendages for body segment. And the arachnids have uh, specialized fangs called Chelicera, and two body regions and four pairs of legs, and no antenna. Um, that one body region is the cephalothorax, which is the head thorax, and a combination, and then the abdomen is separate. And this includes the scorpions and spiders, and even the horseshoe crab is in this particular group. Um, there are si various systems in arthropods for respiration. <clears throat> they have either gills or trachea, which are air tubes. They have open circulatory systems, which means that they do not that their blood is not always in vessels throughout their body. For excretion, they have green glands in the crustacea or malpighian tubules in insects, as two examples of excretory. Uh, structures that you find in arthropods. They have an exoskeleton made of chitin and flexible joints in their legs. For nervous systems, they have compa both compound and simple eyes depending on uh, the species. They have a brain and a ventral nerve card that goes down the uh, lower surface of their body. And in reproduction, uh, they are dioecious. They have two separate sexes and they undergo stages of development especially the insects where we see either incomplete or complete metamorphosis. A lot, uh, most of the arthropods go through various kinds of stages in their development where they shed their external uh, skeleton and then grow and secrete a new skeleton. Um, <clears throat> arthropods, as they developed or evolved from the, from the earliest arthropods to more recent ones, uh, over time developed fewer body segments and more specialized appendages. And so we and that's how we end up with specialized mouth parts in various kinds of insects and uh, things like that. There are, uh, arthropods are really important to people. We have a tendency to kind of discount them all the time. But if it weren't for arthropods, um, we wouldn't have a lot of the foods that we have. Um, yes, some arthropods are used as food. If you like crabs or shrimp, then, uh, then you need your arthropods. Um, they're also important pollinators of, of uh, plants, which is really important. Uh, bees and butterflies, um, as well as other in, and moths and other insects like that, are really important to pollinate, pollinate various kinds of flowers to produce fruits and, that we eat. And then, of course, they're important because of the negative con context of insect pests and disease carriers. And we'll talk a little bit more about this in class. Um, the worksheets that you need to do to go along with this particular part of notes, there's a worksheet called Mollusks, which has two pages. And there's another worksheet called The Grasshopper, which we will uh, try to do your best to label that, and we will label it in class if you need assistance with some of that. And that completes the notes on Mollusks and Arthropods.